Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Had to Choose Only One Recording by Artist X, it would have to be Work Y. Artist X is the great German conductor Eugen Jochum. Now, Jochum is one of those conductors that, I mean, everyone loves him. It's impossible not to love him. He was an artist of incredible warmth and humanity, and he had a really giving spirit in his interpretations. He was sometimes known rather contemptuously, I think, as the, you know, little Fort Wengler, the Kleine Fort Wengler, you know, the sort of Fort Wengler, Fort Wengler light, because he had an expressive conductorial style, an interpretive style that involved a lot of tempo fluctuations and things like that. But he did all that stuff with so much more finesse than Fort Wengler ever managed and with orchestral discipline. And he conducted Bruckner a hundred times better. In fact, he was really known for his Bruckner and terribly underrated in Brahms and Beethoven, especially Brahms, because he made two of the absolute greatest Brahms cycles ever. I mean, when I first did talks about those recordings, and I mentioned them, and some of you went out and listened to them, and you went, whoa, this is just amazing. His Haydn London symphonies were famous. He did incredible, you know, Elgar Enigma variations. He could, he could do that style of music. His Wagner was terrific. He really almost never made a bad record, I might almost say. He did make a few because he took over the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra in the 50s when it was in rough shape. And some of those recordings were kind of grotty. He also made superb recordings of Bach's sacred music. There's a lot to choose from. Really just a tremendous amount to choose from. He was a gifted artist who was underrated in his lifetime because he was one of those DG artists who was doing the same stuff as Carl Böhm and Herbert von Karajan and later Leonard Bernstein. You know, they had such a stable of conductors doing the standard German repertoire. So, so Jochum may not have gotten as much attention as he deserved. I mean, he did that unbelievable unfinished symphony in Boston. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. And that is why I have chosen for the one recording I would wish to have, if I could only have one, Carmina Barana. Oh, I know this is going to be controversial. It should be something by Bruckner or Brahms or some of the, one of those like big B German people. No, absolutely not. It's Carmina Barana, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, because there are a billion recordings of Carmina Barana, and this is probably the best one, or one of the best, one of the top few, in a work which does not allow a lot of room for interpretation, because it's mostly rhythmic ostinatos and fairly simple strophic songs. So what you need to have is a great chorus, which he has here. He has the chorus and orchestra of the Deutschen Upper Berlin, wonderful choir, wonderful orchestra. And he has three amazing soloists. And Jochen was such a gifted conductor of vocal music. We talked about his Bach, his, his Wagner operas and other things. I mean, he had great casts most of the time. And here he is, one of the greatest of all. He has Gundula Janowitz, Gerhard Stolze, and Dietrich Fischer-Dieskau, an amazing trio of soloists. The recording was authorized by Karl Orff. Yes, it had the imprimatur of the composer, which doesn't mean anything, frankly, but I mean, it's nice to see. It's like having that sanitized for your protection, you know, piece of paper over your toilet seat when you go into a new hotel room. But there is a newness to this interpretation that hasn't waned at all. And the other thing that really makes it special, in my view, is that although the piece does not seem to allow so much freedom in interpretation, if you listen to different recordings by different people, the differences are sometimes immense. So there is, there is, what I'm saying is there is actually quite a bit of leeway that can creep in, in terms of tempo, in terms of balance, in terms of, of, of you know, orchestral coloring. And here, what Jochen manages to do, and something that, for example, Herbert Kegel also did in this work, but not to the same degree, I think, he finds all of the music in the piece. That is, it's not mechanical. It's not just you know, rhythm, primal beating rhythms. There's, there's real music in here. There's humor. 
there's earthiness. I mean, if you look at the text and what they're singing about, you find that that seemingly has a reflection in what Jochum does. Like every great piece of vocal music, and this is a great piece of vocal music, I mean, whatever you think about Orff or, you know, the work itself, it's, it's, an, it's a remarkably fine setting of the text and the meaning of the text, the sense of it. And these texts cover a huge range of human experience from, you know, the, the sort of, you know, ribaldry of hanging out in the tavern and, and, and pining away for love and, 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 you know, the, the, the dire destiny of fate and all of these things come into play here. You know, the joy of springtime, the seasons, it's, it's, it's a world of experience expressed in granted a somewhat limited musical idiom of deliberate simplicity filched largely from Stravinsky's Le Nos, granted all of that. But what Orff does, he does supremely well. And Jochum tells us that. He shows us how the music and the words are inextricably bound in an absolutely beautiful, organic, and rich, rich musical experience, richer than you ever would have believed possible, um, given you know, what the piece is and what its reputation is and what a lot of other performances do. And for that reason, Work Why is Carmina Barana and its supreme interpreter, quite possibly, is Eugen Jochum. And I always said, and you might say, well, what's the point of being the best guy who did Carmina Barana? Who cares about Carmina Barana, right? No, no. Anybody who is the best at anything, whatever that thing is, deserves our undying respect. And if you think that this work is easy, I mean, you are absolutely on drugs. It is a tremendously complex piece of music in many, many respects. And one which, like any large work with, with choral forces and solo forces and big orchestral forces, lots can go wrong. And in most performances, something does somewhere, but not here. And that is a major achievement. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.